Did, when you found, I mean, did you find any evidence that this could be a suicide? I mean, when you look at where the gunshot wound went in, was it at an angle that she, if she had a weapon, she could have her shot herself? Because he said it was kind of behind the ear. Conceivably. If you look at one bit of evidence alone, you might say, oh, this, it could be, it could be. And so we thought, what rules it in and what rules it out? When you rule something a suicide, you have to be able to conclusively state, more probable than not, that this person succeeded in the purposeful attempt to end their life. Mm -hmm. Is the location of the wound alone something that could happen with a suicide? Yes, it is. 45% of self-inflicted gunshot wounds are to the side of the head. Mm -hmm. So that's a possibility. If you're right-handed, the right side, left-handed, left side, people can sometimes use the opposite side. But that's not much of a clue. But that's the only thing that points to a suicide. With everything else we're dealing with, the scene, uh, the lack of any vital reaction to smoke in the air, so many other factors ruled out the suicide completely. So that's why we're able to conclude very easily that this was a homicide, not a suicide. Did she stop breathing before the fire started? She stopped breathing before the fire ever got to her. Any part of the fire. There was no evidence that the atmosphere of the fire, heat of the fire, anything of the fire was at her when she was alive. And remember, the definition of death is the irreversible cessation of circulation and respiration. So as long as you're alive, you're breathing and or have circulation. You have something going on. She had evidence of neither one. So she was not anywhere near the fire um, at the time she died. That's where the scene comes back, and the scene says the fire started at her. So therefore, that's what we're dealing with here. She couldn't have done that. If you're in a fire, the atmosphere of the fire includes gases like carbon monoxide, things we look for. None was found. It also contains a smoke, particulate matter, that gets inhaled into the lungs. We can see it grossly with the unaided eye or microscopically. None, either grossly or microscopically. She couldn't have done that. How quickly would you get that microscopic evidence in her lungs? Like if she was lit the fire over here, ran to the other side of the house, would she have evidence of soot in her lungs? Well, that's the problem with this. Uh, all it takes is one or two breaths and you can have soot in your lungs. Because, you know, a fire like this burning inside a closed area, inside a house is technically an area that would be oxygen deficient. So therefore it will produce carbon monoxide. A fire that doesn't have adequate oxygen will produce carbon monoxide more than carbon mm -hmm. dioxide. Um, she, even with that gunshot wound to the head, the difference is death is not instantaneous. Death is a process. If you have complete cessation of breathing, you still will have circulation for a period of five or six minutes, ten minutes even, witnessed by somebody who's on life support in the hospital and they finally pull the plug. The heart will continue to beat because you don't need brain input to have your heart beat. Same thing, if you have complete cardiac arrest, you will breathe for five or six minutes afterwards because your brain has enough drive down in the brain stem to control the muscles that will breathe for you. They've done studies that demonstrate how if you do have complete cardiac arrest, a person will breathe, or a pig in this case in the studies, would breathe normally for a couple, three minutes, then have the erratic breathing, finally the last gasps, and then stop after about five or six minutes. In five or six minutes, copious soot, smoke would have been there. You'd find evidence of inhalation, and there was none. Plus, there's no evidence on her body that she was ever alive, blistering, or anything being exposed to the heat of the fire. So you only blister when you're alive? Technically, yes. Finding a blister that's full of fluid on an upper body surface of someone who's in the fire indicates that that tissue was damaged and there was blood pressure which could push fluids into the damaged tissues and make a blister. You know, if you get a uh, first degree burn is red, mm -hmm. second degree burn is red and blisters and it's sore. So that blistering indicates that there's been some damage and the circulation will push fluids into it. Now technically you could also, by virtue of position of the body, blood will settle down and actually can push some fluid into damages along the sides. None of that occurred. So the conclusion on there is that she was dead long enough that there wasn't even fluid still remaining in a position to make blisters along the edges. 
The back of her body that was against the floor was not that badly burned. The front was very badly burned. She, all of her burn injuries were to the front of her body, the exposed areas. She wasn't alive when the fire was reaching her body or the smoke.